So this is what we're dealing with here, highway closure. So it should be some ripe territory for splitting. Google shows that some of this road is like fully red. Some of it looks green. Mm, what I estimate is we're probably going to have a lot of like slow moving traffic that's piling up at times. So it should be pretty good for a mixed splitting and filtering experience. This is the bike we're going to be using. Okay, yeah, it's not a motorcycle, sure, but it's got the signage on it. <laughs> this is the uh, the monster that we're going to be using here to uh, split some lanes. And this thing is set up to be as low-key as possible when splitting lanes. Scooter, not a motorcycle. It's got the signage on it. Low CC, 50 CC, right, you can tell, so... So, you know, with this video, I'm, I think I'm really just going to, I know the title of the video is supposed to be, you know, explanatory, how to, how to filter, how to split in a state where it's illegal. But that's kind of going to be the theme of the video, is it's really just going to be me talking about how I filter here in Washington, right? How do I filter here in Washington? Um, what things I do, things I don't do, and today, right, is a day where the freeway is closed. So this is kind of be, going to be a good example of, you know, what what I'm talking about here. There you go. There's a biker. Hopefully that guy's also splitting. As you can see, it's kind of ripe territory for splitting. I mean, look at that over there. Um, and this, I mean, it's just a, it's just a mess out there. So, really, this is going to be a day where splitting is going to be totally unenforced, um, and that's kind of what the plan is. It's also a very hot day today, so that you know, kind of further normalizes splitting. And the other challenge that we're going to be facing is the fact that, you know, this is splitting, don't get me wrong, this is filtering, I mean, but cars are also somewhat moving. So I'm just going to start approaching, and usually what I would do is I would check for police officers, um, but in this situation, I won't actually do that because there's not really going to be much police officer activity. That, what you're going to notice, is a lot of hand-waving, too. Um, and why the hand waving? So basically, if you're tucking in in front of everybody, if you're tucking in, rather, should I say, like in this situation, usually you won't have to tuck in because you are splitting. But at some point, you're going to have to rejoin the queue. You know what I mean? You're going to have to rejoin the queue, and the reason for that is cars start moving. Like up ahead, if you see, cars are going to start moving. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here, and tuck back in. And that's really going to be a large part of what I'm doing here. And why is that? In a place like California, you wouldn't really do that. You would just split normally until cars kind of match the speed at which you're going. And then at that point, at that point, you know, that's when you kind of discreetly merge back into traffic. Um, but in this situation, I'm not, we're not in California, and again, the title of this video is how do you lane split or filter in a state in which it's illegal. Okay, we got some turning cars here, something to consider, this guy's kind of getting out of the way, I appreciate you. And then traffic starts moving again, and as you can see, the light cycle is back to being red, and that's totally okay, you know, I mean, we can't beat all the lights, unfortunately. Uh, but the idea is just to make progress, and of course, you know, if we're talking about splitting in particular, it's because you don't want to be waiting around when cars are crawling like that, 
it's just not great. So this is usually what I do when I get to the front of a line, is I'll tuck back in right in front of the first bar, and then I'll give a quick peace sign. And what that is, is it's a diffusal technique, right? So first of all, I'm clearly back in one lane. And when I'm back in a lane, there's no uncertainty, there can be no uncertainty about what's going on when the cars start moving again. When the cars are going to start moving again, they're going to know. I'm not going to try to gun the gap or you know move forward. The cars in the front have the open road ahead of them. It's clear that I'm going to be in this lane. And of course, I'm not going to split or filter because it's going to be an open road. And that helps to avoid road rage. And so you see that car in front of me, for example. I mean, yeah, I'm on a scooter, but the car in front of me took off. Right? Whereas the cars behind me, they're still kind of plumped up. And the reason they're plumped up is just traffic, you know, and it's a two-lane road, so you get all the way over to the right-hand side here, and now I'm trying to keep pace with the cars. And before long, we should be stopped again. <laughs> so here we are. The idea is uh, really just to try to avoid road rage, you know, as much as possible. Now, we've been really lucky until now, too. There's a freeway closure. What does that mean? That means semis. And semis are a different beast to split paths, right? It's not the same. It's not just going to be like a, uh, like a regular car. Usually, you don't even want to split by semis. So here's a situation where, you know, cars start moving right as I get to the point where I would usually split. And, um, no, no, no worries, because that light just turned yellow. And it's barely going to be worth it to split up to the light, because there's literally only, like, two cars that I can get past. But I will do it just for demonstrative purposes, right? So basically, same thing as before. You come up here. You go up in front, and then there's actually like a huge gap right here, so I'll just, I'll just give a quick sign to the guy, but usually I would keep going, um, you know, because I'm not, I'm not going to split a light just to pass one car. There's some fellow scooters over there, <laughs> fellow scooter riders. And then as I take off, as you can see, the car in front of me, the fact that get over because I can see there's a very big gap in the flow of traffic right now. This lane is flowing, so obviously I just couldn't get over here. And the reason why this lane is flowing is because there's a left-hand turn up ahead to the detour. Um, I'll show you something here which is not quite splitting. It, to me, it's the same thing. It's congestion relief, you know. So the idea is you just get ahead. Well, actually, this van kind of made it very awkward, or this Jeep, I mean. So we'll get ahead and we'll get into this lane. We'll see if we can actually make this light even. That would be very cool. And that should give us plenty of splitting opportunities ahead. Yeah, so I move out of the way here. Avoidance. You don't want to stop suddenly on a blind curb. That's like the last thing you want to do. And then right here, a lot of this is going to be, as you can see, these cars are actually moving. So until we get down to a low enough speed, I won't really split myself, but right at around here is when you should start becoming comfortable with splitting. And so then now we're just going to move between the cars. And in a situation like this, you don't want to jam it, right, because cars are, cars are moving. So you don't actually want to push through because it's the, the cars will move and they can change distances on you very fast. And now cars are fully stopped. This is obviously my favorite type of splitting. Cars are like basically not moving. So here we just come up, we check here, everything looks good. Now normally what I would be doing in these situations, I'd be doing a lot of checks for, I'd be doing a lot of checks for cops, right? But again, in this sort of situation, this is basically as unenforced as you're going to get it with regards to police officers. If I did see a cop that was in this traffic, I would merge behind them. I probably would not keep going. 
Um, but the reason for that is simple. Okay, kind of get out from between those two cars there as they move. The reason for that is simple, and it's because um, most cops will tolerate seeing filtering, but many cops may not tolerate being filtered past. You know, you're basically sticking it in their face at this point. And again, the fact that it's uh, very hot today kind of allows it. It's not a big deal. But you still want to keep your speed down. This is the speed at which I'll usually filter. I'm not very comfortable filtering over the speed. And why is that? Well, a couple different reasons. First of all, we do not live in a state where we have a lot of people splitting around, right? So there's nobody behind me that's going to be like, come on, hurry up. Like, I can basically go as slow as I want. As much as I hope that one day we get a state where, you know, people will be able to, uh, to split freely. As of now, not really the case yet. I may see another motorcyclist here splitting, but, you know, like I said, it's not really happening on a huge scale. And that's also because Washingtonians don't ride on a very huge scale yet. But, again, I, uh, I like to keep a low speed also because of another two factors, the first one being law enforcement, right? So when it comes to law enforcement, going at a slow speed means what? It basically means that if you see one up ahead, it's going to be plenty of time for you to get over. You've got, you got to be scanning for cops that or cars that look like cops, everything like that. It'll give you plenty of time. Wow, this is fully jammed, even more so than last year. That's kind of crazy. So, you know, as you uh, see all this, it just gives you a lot of time to adapt. You're going slow, and there you go. We have traffic moving up ahead. So, after that happens, and here's a uh, motorcyclist in front of us not splitting. So, you, you can see because of the hill here. The uh, traffic is actually moving fairly quickly, like they're not going to be stopped and there's a red light that hit over there, so that's when you're going to stop. And then as we get to the bottom of this hill, the backlog from the red light kind of picks up and... Ah, shit. We got cut by this red light, too. And motorcyclists turned off, turned away. So up ahead I noticed that right hand side is slowing down and now we're free flowing this is one of those areas on Google Maps where it shows you know green meaning that it's put on a blinker just to get over, do a quick key sign for that guy. So see, that's how I merge back into traffic. The, the blinker will help. The blinker basically tells people, you know, hey, excuse me, I'm, this is what I'm trying to do right now so that people don't freak out. And then the other thing is get over to the right-hand side. So you see the guy behind me who I cut up against. Just because the traffic ended up being slow moving, or I mean fast moving, he wants to get around me. So I made it easy for him to do. Yeah, for a second I thought that sound transit was a police officer, but it's not. So we've got stop traffic up here, so I just cut in. And 
I see a green light up ahead. So I'm going to be rejoining with traffic right here. Another peace sign for this guy. And you see that cuts down so much on rage and things like that because for the driver's perspective they may be just starting to move. They haven't really begun to move at all. And so then, you know, they're in a position where they're not going to feel they're not going to feel, uh, and that guy's letting me split, which I appreciate. Very nice of him. But we still have some moving traffic here. So I am going to be a little bit conservative and then go right over here. So see how it is right here. You want to rejoin moving traffic. And I'm going to do it in front of the cyber truck. Do a quick peace sign again. And there you go. So, all right, I didn't break any land speed records. I didn't go extremely fast or anything like that, but I certainly... Oh, look, there's a cop up there. See, so if I would have passed that cop, then uh, I probably would have stopped filtering. I would have noticed him. He was at least like a good, you know, five, six cars ahead of me. Okay, and now we can go backwards a little bit. So let me show you what's going to happen here. I'm going to cut in front and then begin filtering right over here. Now here's a semi, right? So, yeah, I can go around it, but because I have a gap right here to be able to do this, instead, I'm going to bypass the semi because I don't, I don't see the point in forcing it, you know, in forcing a, a, a filter if it's not, if you're not perfectly comfortable. Now here I'm just trying to see when the traffic is going to start moving and it looks like it's going to start moving right here. Flash my peace sign and then I get back in. If, it, if this was like a regular, like Utah or Arizona or something where filtering is totally okay, Colorado, Minnesota now, which is kind of crazy. Minnesota got it jammed through kind of by accident. Um, then I would just keep filtering as cars accelerate because who cares if cars start honking their horns or freaking out or you know whatever it doesn't really matter you know what I mean it's kind of what you got to do what you got to be careful for antagonizing drivers it will happen at some point like you will get a honk at some point today I'm probably going to get a honk you know so lining myself up to, to filter here but uh well, traffic still is moving. Okay, so here we go again. I gotta get back into the other lane. That guy's a little bit too close, so I'm gonna let him pass. And then I'll go in after him. Situational awareness, right? You just gotta keep your head on a swivel and use the mirror to head check, whatever you need to do. This is not that far. This guy stopped to let this guy in, so that was an unexpected turn. And this guy's also getting in. So, because I want to turn right, I'm just going to go ahead and move forward here. Let this guy in ahead of me. And so here's the green light. I could have split through his bike lane, for example. A little bit of an unorthodox split. But I don't because of the green light making the cars move, at least somewhat. Because it's not a legal state, you don't want to cause people to get uh, extremely flustered, extremely upset, angry scared, uh, frustrated, um, vindicative, right? You don't want to make them feel like all right, traffic's about to start moving and it looks like we can time this perfectly here. I'll flash the peace sign and tuck in. You're going to see those patterns repeat itself here. The peace sign functions in multiple ways. It's like part of it is a permission. Like, hey bro, mind if I come in here when in reality it's not really permission. You know, you're not asking. You're putting yourself there. Sometimes it's a, uh, it's a, it can be taken as a permission statement. So this is weird. This guy gave me plenty of room up here, so I'm actually going to do what I usually never do. And I usually never would come up to the very front of the line because you're on a scooter and also because you don't know how fast the guy at the very front of the line wants to go. Um, and you don't want to piss him off, right? Maybe the guy was planning on really hammering it because he's upset about being in his traffic and he was planning on just sending it as fast as he could. Um, 
Well, if you get right in front of him, especially if you're on a scooter, that's like inviting a lot of rage. Now, in this situation, it was different. The guy's in a clapped out minivan, obviously not really paying attention, um, and he left a huge gap in front of him. Yeah, he's way back there. But I still will get in the right-hand lane. Just to show that I'm okay, you know, getting out of this way. You know, being able to get to where you're going. So as you can see, you know, traffic's again is starting to move. That guy's got his blinker on. There's a pretty big gap, so I'm just going to take this gap right here because I don't want, and that was kind of a miscalculation, you know, but normally this lane should not have been this slow, but it was slow because there was a bunch of turning cars, so kind of on me, I should have seen it. There we go. Rare unorthodox split to the side. Usually I would you know, the green light kind of made my decision for me, but uh, normally I don't do as much surfing on the shoulder, or you can call this the shoulder. Perfect time for some splitting to shine. I'll let this guy go, and then I'm going to go ahead and split right here. And again, we are kind of having some moving traffic right here. Most important thing, we're going to go over here, here, there we go. Yeah, because it was a little bit hard to spot where the traffic was moving. Sometimes it appears to be moving, but it's not. This is uh, the dream right here in terms of splitting and filtering. Now, let me talk about dooring, because this is a good example of when you could have dooring. And this is another, the third and final reason why I keep my speed so low is because in this situation, uh, here we go, I don't want to split next to this guy, but he is fully stationary, so I'm going to go for it as fast as I can. There we go. And we have a yellow light, perfect. Now I'm going to show you guys something else, which is the split to right turn. So it looks a little bit congested over there, so I'm actually going to split up here and then have my right blinker on. I'm going to go up here and put myself right here, make a check, that guy's turning, and then go ahead and turn. I don't want to go down there because that that's actually where the freeway uh, begins again and there's no easy turnaround. Third and final reason I keep a low speed. Wait till uh, we slow down a bit over here, and that way I can explain what I mean. Dooring. It has never happened to me before to get doored. Um, that being said, it's a possibility that could technically happen at any time, right? Let's do a quick tuck in right here, and then we do a quick peace sign, and then accelerate. Now I'm clearly in the lane, right? And then I also make sure if I do that, I always, you know, I don't dick around when it comes time to accelerate. Like, I'm going to accelerate, you know? I'm not just going to do that and then, like, not pay attention to the road or something. Dooring is something that could happen at any time. Quick so peace sign, tuck in right here. Ouch, couldn't see that manhole. Enduring and road rage, very closely related, right? Now, enduring has not happened to me personally. I've never had somebody attempt to, you know, open their doors or do anything. This is kind of a particular one because cars are stopped, but cars are also moving. So, I'm going to try to go and make a little bit of progress here. And that car was, that truck was going to turn in, but I had my hand on the brake. 
and we were also going like five miles an hour, so not going to be an issue. Dooring is something that can happen to anybody. I wouldn't necessarily say it's going to happen. There's a little gap here, so I do my little thing, and then I put my scooter right there. Dooring is not necessarily going to happen to everybody. Maybe 10, 20 years ago, dooring was something that could happen. Searching videos of YouTube and everything, there's really only like one or two dooring videos that I know of. I think people are accepting splitting more in every state. It's becoming a little bit more widely known and understood. They touch in front of that car. So if that car is upset, well now it has a, plenty of time to go around me because I'm in the slow lane again. So it's no longer going to be upset. Dooring, my friends. Dooring is uh, something that can happen. It, it can happen. And I would not necessarily say that it's like going to happen to anybody who splits, to everybody who splits. Ooh, I want to split by this trike. Should I? Should I filter up? Yeah, I probably will. I'll filter up right here. Sometimes the trikes and the boomer hogs or whatever, they get very upset about lane splitting. Uh, you know, for different reasons, right? Some of the times I've gotten, like, severe rage. Uh, it's been from, like, Harleys, you know, who just, like, they'll, they'll spit at you, or they'll... they'll yell at you, you know, basically like grown up man on a Harley versus boy on a scooter yelling some goddamn sense into him. Now, even if that's what they think, it's, uh, they're not really gonna they're not really gonna door somebody over it, right? Okay, this is the other thing I want to uh, show you, is it's not exactly lane splitting, but I don't know what you would call this, I mean I do this a lot, it's just going in here and tucking over, so here's a perfect gap right there. So I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna piece the guy in the Tesla and boom. Technically, I don't even think that there's a law against that, right? Hey, there he goes. <laughs> How many CCs? Huh? How many CCs is that? Uh, just 50. This is just 50. This one. Well, you need around town. Especially right now, huh? <laughs> Yeah, those. That's what I'm saying, man. Right? Well, now you got the extra weight, you know, in the oh, back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but with this, you feel more comfortable sometimes, you know. You know, you're gonna hit a puddle of oil or something like that, and right. Where are you going today? Good day. That's pretty far. I'm going to go to Coal Creek and turn around and get back. I'm making a video on lane splitting. Cool. Take it easy. Yeah, so I totally misjudged that guy on the trike. He was actually very cool as you can see. Very friendly and I would say non-judgmental and easy going. And if I heard him correctly, which is the funniest part, he told me that usually he would take out his regular motorcycle, I think it was a Harley or something, usually he'd take out a Harley so that he could split lanes. And sometimes they'll scream at you, right, that they might say something like, uh, you're so, uh, flip and irresponsible, you know, you're, this is the most irresponsible shit that you could do, and everything like that. So that does happen. But, uh, obviously, you know, it's not, I don't know, usually if I see another biker, I'll wave at them. Sometimes I'll talk to them, but not always. Oh, I got lucky. Is that a... No, it's not. I thought that was a police car because of the license plate. It's not. I'm, I'm good. So, shall we resume when I'm, uh, when I was talking about dooring? Which, you know, ironically, I was thinking I might catch a little bit of road rage on video today, but I do not believe that's going to happen. I'm just going to get in front here and then take off. 
I don't think that's going to happen for a couple different reasons. You know, one, I've learned to split <laughs> much better and not be as... Not enough room to make it there. I've learned to split much better and not be as uncertain. And I think the uncertainty part of it is partially what really kills... I mean, not what really kills people, but what really makes people freak out. They see a bike that doesn't know what it's doing and it's splitting and they get so pissed off because of that, right? So even this lifted truck, like, no big deal. And this is technically splitting. This is, these are two moving vehicles right here. Um, most of the world would still just call this filtering. So usually what you'll hear is like, I'll hear somebody behind me make a honk or something. And that's just basically a driver who said, Hey yo, what the fuck? What do you think you're doing? You know? What the fuck is that? I mean, that does happen. But not in the way you would think. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can flip this before the light turns yellow on us. Looks like we were able to, but I just had to be aware of this moving vehicle, which is why it slowed down so much. And cars move in a little bit, so I feel okay now to go. See, like, you don't want to be too indecisive. At the same time, you don't want to go too fast. You don't want to freak people out, right? If you're going to freak people out, um, it's not going to end up well for you. Okay, here's another rider that we see. He is not splitting. He is not filtering, uh, probably because of his saddlebag. So I'm not really going to judge. And also, I'm not going to freak out the riders. Uh, I'm just going to wait till we get up here, and then I'm going to wait to make another move. I'm going to give this guy a peace sign, just to say hi to him. He did look like one of those old-fashioned riders that um, may have some opinions about splitting. Splitting. It's a little tight here, and the lights turn and green up ahead, so we got to get past. And... a peace sign here, because that was... See, that's, uh, that's indecisiveness right there. Indecisiveness that people don't, don't um, agree with or... They don't appreciate it. There we go. And we wind up next to the cellar once more. Yeah, so you know, sometimes people take it upon themselves. They might say something. They might start screaming, shouting. Now again, I, okay, so you get to an intersection. It's very important to watch those cars. As you're splitting, somebody could be making a left turn. Just just be on the lookout, basically, right? Just look out for what's going on. Okay, we got a little bit of a tight fit here. And uh, now we're going to stop for a moment. I will say this, though. I did this last year when they closed down the freeway, because they usually do it once a year during the summertime. Same bike, same everything. Uh, maybe the one difference was that the one difference was that I was less confident splitting. It was really everything was basically the same, but I was much less confident splitting. That's for sure. Okay, and I'm going a little bit faster than what I would usually go because back to what I was talking about earlier, the dooring part. You want to make sure that you're going to be okay if somebody does open a door. And if it does occur, you don't want to go straight into their door. It's certainly not going to... I mean, that would be, like, catastrophic if you hit somebody while filtering. And why is that? Simple as, okay? You hit somebody while you're filtering, you're filtering. Most of the time, if you do accidentally ding somebody while you're filtering and you're apologetic about it and you're, there's no damage to anything, then nothing's going to happen. You're going to just be like, okay, sorry. And then, you, you know, you can make up whatever it is. You know, like if a young dude, just be like, oh, I'm sorry, I was breaking down in the heat or something, right? Just say something like that. I was breaking down in the heat, um, so I had to start, I had to start splitting, you know, whatever. But, it's the, basically kind of the worst thing that could happen if you were splitting lanes 
I have not seen anybody uh, L splitting yet, which is actually kind of normal when you think about it. Uh, reason being that see that guy's waiting in it. That's kind of depressing to see people waiting in this, but last year it was actually a lot more riders that were splitting through this kind of gridlock. Way, way, way more. You know. Oh, look at that. We get our own lane. <laughs> That's nice. Everybody uh, looks like they're kindly getting out of the way, but actually, no, everybody here is trying to turn right as well. So we're just going to do this right here. I'm going to do this, make sure there's no bicyclists, and then I'm going to turn right here. Do that. Okay, well, I'm running out of uh, storage space and battery power here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and kind of explain what I'm talking about with storing and the third reason why I keep it keep speed pretty low. It's the worst thing that could happen really if you do hit somebody while you're splitting. It's pretty bad. This guy looks like he's giving me a lot of room which I'm not sure if they're doing on purpose or they're just not paying attention. But I will attempt to split here. There we go. And you know what? I am going to get in front of this guy too because I don't want to wait around over there. Ouch. This was median dividers pretty roughly. Uh, yeah, I could probably keep splitting. Let's see if I can get in front of this guy here. You hit somebody while you're splitting. Worst case scenario, what could happen, even if you're not, like, well, I guess you would be at fault if you hit somebody while they're splitting. Um, but worst case scenario, what will happen they get upset, you know, and then it's like, we're going to put in an insurance claim because maybe there's maybe there's no damage, especially on a scooter, but they it looks like there is, right? Then what do they do? Well, they say, all right, we're going to, and then they know, here's the thing, like they know that splitting is illegal, right? They're aware of it, they're fully aware of it. Should I go? Yeah, I'm going to try to go right here, and I'm going to do a quick peace sign right there, because that was kind of a sketchy move. It, it's the kind of guy that's going to be like, aha, gotcha, not only were you splitting when you weren't supposed to, but you fucked me over by hitting my car, you caused damages, now I'm going to pursue you to the full extent of the law, you know, whatever. I'm going to pursue you, and I'm going to go after you, and I'm going to, you know, call the cops. So. Now what's going to happen, law enforcement's going to be called to, you know, to do the police report and everything and all that yunk. And, uh, okay, you know, whatever, right? Uh, there's that dude from earlier. <laughs> there's the guy in the, on the tricycle. That's crazy, he's still all the way over here. So now law enforcement's going to be called, right? I'm going to do something a little bit more ballsy, something I don't usually do which is hang out between the cars here in order to make that light, which I did and then slowly make it up okay, so we've established how we've established how getting into an accident of any kind when you're filtering in an illegal state is not good the law enforcement, they're going to show up if the officer there is, uh, is you know, the kind of officer that's like I hate lane splitters uh, I hate law, you know, rule breakers or whatever um, then what's going to happen is they're going to issue you a, actually a citation even though they didn't see you split. Um, okay, the citations, you can dismiss them. I guess I totally forgot to talk about this in, this, in today's video, but the citations can be totally dismissed. Just get a traffic attorney, goddammit. A traffic attorney dismissing a filtering citation like this or whatever is like a couple hundred bucks. You never want to pay a citation. You never want to let it go on your record. Never, ever, 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 ever. You want to have a fully clean record. You can get pulled over by the cops dozens of times and still have a fully clean record. Fully, okay? So it is not an issue. 
a ticket, if you do get a ticket in any situation, you fight it, you get it dropped, or you get it fled down to a non-moving violation. The whole point is, you pay your filtering tax, and you move on. Because, uh, your record, right? What I was talking about, your criminal record. Okay, tuck, and then a quick flash of a peace sign right here, and boom. Always scan for license plate. That's another really good one. I don't know if you can see this guy's license plate in front of me, but there's tabs on it. Okay, in Washington State, um, you can have undercover, and you can have unmarked. Right? Undercover and unmarked vehicles. Okay, the two are not quite the same. Undercover vehicles are actual, like, vehicles that they use for drug busts, right? And shit like that. That's what an undercover car is, right? Unmarked, you'll see those all the time. They're literally, like, they're obviously cop cars. They just don't have, um, they're not, like, black and white. They're maybe just, like, all white or all black or something like that, right? So unmarked is different than undercover. A true undercover car will have tabs, because obviously, but in Washington state, and I believe most of the other states, there's laws that the operator of an under, un, undercover, so basically like a street car, even if they're law enforcement, if they put on lights, how is the general public supposed to know that that's not some creep that just bought lights off of Amazon, right? In most places, um, they cannot, they can't, I think they can't pull over people for, for traffic enforcement unless they're doing traffic enforcement as part of like, you know, an accident scene or something like that, and they're trying to manage the scene of the accident. And that's when they can do traffic enforcement, right? But they can't just pull you over. Okay, they can, and that's certainly not going to stop them. And if the cop was upset, yeah, he would totally do that. And I've seen videos even in Washington State where cops in their personal vehicles jump out at a red light to try to go tackle a motorcyclist. Uh, is that going to happen with the scooter? No. But at the same time, all I'm saying is um, that the undercover cars are not usually what you got to watch out for, right? Undercover vehicles, uh, even if you did split or filter right past them because you don't know that there's a cop in there, uh, why is he going to blow his cover or use his undercover car to make a traffic stop, especially on a small piece of bike like this? Right? So it doesn't make any sense. Unmarked, they will totally fuck you over. I mean, they're totally going to pull you over and mess up your day or whatever. Oh boy, I can tell my transmission is not too happy. Yeah, transmission is a little slow. Probably a little bit overheated. Unmarked cars will screw you over, but they have exempt plates. They have license plates that don't have tabs, and they have XMT on them. So all you have to do is super simple. You just gotta look and see, scan the license plates of any car that looks like it could be a cop car. And if you see XMT, just don't go past them. Right? If you see XMT, just chill and tuck in behind them and what, what I guess you can do too, if you really want to be ballsy, is just like if you pull up next to them, you can ask cops. You can say, hey, is it cool if I filter a little bit? If, is it cool if I split through all this? You know? Um, you can do that. But under unmarked cars, yeah, you, there's, there's plenty of those, and they will fuck you over, they'll screw you over, you gotta be careful. Undercover cars, they do exist, uh, they're not gonna bother with you, right? They're really, truly not gonna bother with you. Um, they're not gonna care. So, with that, I think that this video is gonna come to an end very soon, unless we can get one more nice, uh, juicy split in. And, uh, funnily enough, you know, we did not catch any sort of... We did not catch any sort of uh, road rage at all, not a single bit of it.